And yeah, I would like to ask you what you could, what you see on this one, on this picture. Someone has an idea. Asphalt. Asphalt. Okay. They have a nicely established bike lane. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, actually, I see after this thesis stormwater management here. You have those pipes that lead the water from the roof down to the grass, actually. It doesn't go to the combined switch system, but it, it's handled by the grass. And if it rains too much, then you have the combined system that is by the sidewalk. So that's an example of what we want to talk about today, ecosystem services, green solutions for stormwater management. So we're going to give you some background knowledge. So in introducing the projects, the method we use, results with the vision and the barriers to this vision, uh, discussion and conclusion, and then the opposition will ask questions. So it may surprise you, but Gothenburg is a very rainy city. <laughs> um, on average, it rains every two to three days. And this rain combined to pretty flat topography and the clay soil doesn't really allow for water infiltration. So it causes a lot, quite many problems with basement floodings. And um, yeah, but also the contaminants as well in urban, um, in the urban, uh, as we in the city, sorry. You have cars and roofs that are sources for different pollutants, so zinc, lead, copper, cadmium, and so on. And those contaminants, um, sorry, I forgot to define maybe stormwater. So when we talk about stormwater, we talk about the rainfall that falls on a hard surface or rooftop or asphalt, and there's no infiltration. So that's what we call stormwater. So when you have this stormwater, it transports those contaminants either to the combined sewage system that ends up at the wastewater treatment plant, that it is not really equipped for this kind of pollutants, so it ends up in the river, or the pollutants go to the stormwater pipe system that goes straight to the river and it's not treated. So we thought, okay, we need to find solutions for that. And uh, as David said, there was this project about the bioretention planter using plants in the city. We thought, oh, that's good. So what happens when we use plants in the city? The idea with those two graphs, not so much the, the numbers, but that stormwater is a man-made problem. On the first slide, that's the flow speed, so how fast the flow moves. And the second one is actually the quantity of water that stays on the ground when it rains. And the point is, when you have a forest, the blue line, the water doesn't really run off. And the quantity of, of water only appears after 1.2 inch, which is about uh, 30 millimeter of rain, which is a very heavy rainfall. So when you remove trees and grass, you create problems. Uh, for the flow, you could say that all these grass and trees, they add friction, so the water doesn't really run off, it stays. And here it's the ability of the ground to hold water, to take it in. So it's only a piece when the soil can't take this water anymore. So when you cut down the trees and add asphalt, well, water just stacked on the ground. Um, so a very simplistic explanation is here. When you have trees and grass and so on, you have this ground infiltration, evapotranspiration, because the trees use water for their metabolism, and evaporates it and so on, and you have very limited runoff. But then when you cut down the forest, and have asphalt, you remove the infiltration, you reduce evapotranspiration, and all of the water is just run off. So now in urban area, when we talk about plants, it adds ecosystem services. So that's nature providing services for us humans. And we mostly focus on regulating services and cultural services. So in the regulating services, it treats water because it can take up uh, pollutants. It slows down the flow, but it also provides shade. So it cools down the cities, it keeps moisture and so on. It's habitat for birds and animals. So that's for the regulating part. And the cultural services, we refer more to well-being, to all the services provided to us, like beautification of the city and uh, uh, what is, um, yeah, recreation areas and so on. So these are examples. This is what you can find elsewhere. So Portland, that's what we call a bioswale. So the idea is to have the water flowing from the road or the sidewalk to this grassy area where the water is kept and treated. In Toronto, which is called uh, close to um, 
Stockholm, you have those islands. Okay, the idea is a bit the same. You have grass, the water flows to the grass area, it's treated, and then it goes to the combined sewage system or storm water system. In Malmö, Malmö is very interesting because they have um, different solutions. They have a system of solutions to treat this water. They have those green roofs, they have canals that leave uh, safely the water to, for example, retention ponds like this one with a brain garden around. So they have all those solutions to limit the amount of water going to the wastewater treatment plant. And lastly, London is also a good example because it's a density and they manage to find space. And that's what we're trying to achieve in this. This is find space in a dense area. But there are examples, of course, in Gothenburg of those ecosystem services applied. Uh, so that's Kiber along the, the car park, they have those rain gardens, that's pretty new, so they don't really have any uh, conclusions about the efficiency so far, but they will have. Uh, Lawrence Bay is this uh, street that goes from Chivaltagata to Avenue. They're having plans of building rain gardens and retention areas, stormwater. In El Portgatana, <laughs> <laughs> they have this grass in the tram line, so that's another way to handle water. And all this is kind of parts of this bigger scheme to have Gothenburg the best city when it rains. <laughs> Yeah, so as Cedric said, what we wanted to do was we wanted to see how we can expand on these solutions and how to implement them in a denser area. For example, in Gothenburg, they are, there are only solutions now in less dense areas where there are already green spaces available. So what we have looked at is for suitable solutions for these denser places, how to find the space when it's very limited and which the implementation barriers are. So why isn't there already projects ongoing? Our case was Linnegatan. As you can see, this red barrier. So we had about one block away from Linnegatan itself. And I'm sure that most of you are quite familiar with the street. And if you're not, you should know that it's a very dense area, this area. There's about eight stories, all the houses along this. And there's a lot of street life with restaurants and you can see over here you have long got and now you have a lot of pubs, people like this area. Um, and this street connects the city to Slotskogen. So there's a lot of movement in the summer where people go to the green spaces. It is also a very important transport route with trams and buses and also the ambulances go here because uh, some of the other guys over here. And stormwater wise, there are both combined sewage pipes, which result in the water going to the wastewater treatment plant, and there's a risk of overflows. And separate stormwater pipes, which have this problem that Cedric was talking about, the water goes directly to the river without being treated. And in one of these stormwater pipes actually goes an old creek called Djupedalsbecken which was covered in 1879. So there's actually a creek there, and we'll come back to that. Um, but the reason that there's a creek is that it's, uh, this street is located in a valley. So we have a lot of water problems, potential water problems, and potential water treatment in this. So to solve our research questions, we of course have some methods. Our main ones were interviews that gave input, input to a workshop and then after workshop, we had an expert consultation to have more input to our vision. And for that, we created a vision for our area, which is more envisioning how the solutions could happen. And we also identified barriers for implementations to, so that we can make recommendations for future actions. For the workshop, we took backcasting as an inspiration and we started with a mini survey so that we got our participants into the mindset of why are we actually doing this and the results of this were then presented during during the workshop together with the present situation that we identified during our interviews so how the stormwater situation is today 
Then we had two workshop exercises in which we put our workshop participants to work. First, we wanted to explore the space and suitable solutions by having them place solutions on a map like this. And they drew things and it was really nice. And then we got them back to reality again. So how do we start to, from today and what do we need to overcome? So here we see that they have placed their solutions and barriers on a timeline. So then for the first part of the results, it's exploring the space exercise. So although, as you can see here, there are two examples for, from the workshop, um, and as you can see, the, the participants had pretty different ideas of how to solve this. But they had some, some strategies in common. To reduce, take the space from motor, motorized traffic, for example, here, we can see that they have taken away the tram lane and moved it to another street so that there's room for a river. And this is actually the solution that we went for in the end. And here, they have taken away the car lane and put the cars together with the trams in the middle. And they also reduced the number of parking spaces. So they thought that the streets were too wide. So we reduced parking spaces along the street. And they improved the multifunctionality of the existing green spaces, for example, by putting rain gardens in between the street trees or using the grass surfaces for infiltration. So we have rain gardens, we have trees, we have different types of blue solutions like fountains and the river. And it was very important during the workshop, we discovered that you should connect the solutions in systems and not look at isolated maps. So these are things that we thought about when developing our vision. So our vision then is Linnea Gotan as a showcase for your boy. Because we think that is a waste to have this street with its nice street life opportunities and its location in the middle of a valley as a transport route. It's better to have it as a green storm, stormwater route honoring Kalva Mimia, <laughs> as it is named after. So we keep the biodiversity aspect here. And so that we move important traffic routes to other streets. And we also introduce more space for cyclists and pedestrians so that people can experience this new street. This vision looks like this. It starts here with the river. I should have the pointing stick or something. Um, so the river is here in the middle of the Negatan. We move the tram to another street. For example, maybe this one. We don't know. We haven't done any traffic investigations. And then we use rain planter boxes with rain garden plants to treat the water before it goes into the creek. So those are on the side streets and along the Negat myself. We also use downspout disconnections, which is when you disconnect the roof, like the pipes going from the roofs from the wastewater system, and you have them. And we, we envision having rain barrels and then leading the water to the grass surfaces. And finally, we have this green roof idea that we got from the workshop that the parking space, which you can see as a square over there, that is located by Hagabion, if you know where you know the area, um, that we dig down into the ground and have a maybe two or three story parking garage. And then on the top, we can have a green roof with a garden that will both take care of stormwater and give recreational and cultural uh, properties. And as you can see here, we also intend that this limited section, selection area will be, should be connected to solutions in Mastukskayan, which is a new development, and in Slotskogen, which is being investigated in the future, I think. I, yeah. So let's go into detail. Linnea looks like this now. So here we have two sections of Linnea This is the one with, uh, with front gardens, and this is one without front gardens. 
which is lower down, closer to the river. So what you can see here is we intend to have the downspout discussions here from this group. And then we have our creek opening with rain gardens on the side. Uh, we keep the bus traffic to one side of the street. And we add an enlarged pedestrian area over here so that people have more space to move. And we also make the bicycle lanes wider. And the next one here, we have the cross streets. And as we see it, we have two type sections of cross streets. There is one narrow, which is this one, and one wide, which is this one. And in both of them, we introduce rain gardens. So, well, Little Dolls Garden is a wide one. Here, as you can see now, there's a lot of parking spaces, which we remove some of these parking spaces to be able to do a wide rain garden with trees. And here, as you can see, the sidewalk is a decent size, <laughs> which is not nice. And we have parking spaces on this side, and also we can have parking spaces on the side, like in between of rain gardens. For the narrow ones, um, Gatan is a good example. We remove most of the parking spaces of Masometia because we feel like this street is not very attractive at this moment. So here you have parking opportunities in between of the rain gardens, like half of the way up approximately and we keep this make the driving space a little bit wider so that you can actually pass with a bicycle pass a bicycle because now as it is now it's not possible without risk of accidents and finally for the vision we have this uh, parking space and we envision it looking like this here you go down into the parking garage with a ramp and we place some planter boxes for growing things and some nice gardens with a good biodiversity capacity and here you can also see that we intend on having very many different species of trees during, along this street so that we increase the resilience and now so we can talk about the second part of the process so now that we have our vision we ask the participants what the problems were what should we do? And so we had this thematic analysis of the this second part of the workshop where we identified three main problems. So lack of tr structure, lack of legitimacy for stormwater, and lack of research in many different areas. So when we talk about legitimacy, we refer to convincing citizens and decision makers that stormwater is a real problem. Because unfortunately, decision makers somewhat is pretty far in their agenda. So we had two different approaches. The bottom up. So we should convince the citizens first that stormwater matters. It's the area. It should look nice. Somewhat is a problem. So educate them to this problem, and make them ask for alternatives to the politicians, decision makers, whatever. And the second approach is the other way around, the top down. So we go to the decision makers straight away. But to them, we need to talk to them in terms of money usually. And that likes research. We need to put values on those ecosystem services that we add to the environment, I mean, to the city. Uh, well, which takes us to the research uh, limitation. Um, as well, we looked around in America, in Sweden, many places, there are solutions, but Maybe there's a lack of benchmarking. Maybe we don't share enough this knowledge. So maybe we should do that to raise this awareness about uh, solutions for stormwater. Then there are many uncertainties. There are so many questions to answer. Which one? Which solution is the right one? How much maintenance? How expensive is it? And so on. Then the best way to solve it is to have test beds. And I talked about Kvibel. That's a very good example. They built it and they're going to learn from it. So let's just do it more if we can. Then as a quantify added value, you need to put numbers on those services. So some kind of cost-benefit analysis, maybe 
that could help solve it. Um, and lastly, stormwater impact. One problem we had in this state is that there is no site-specific data really about the flow, how much water goes there, the um, contaminant concentrations, and so on. And that maybe could contribute as well to raising awareness about the problem. And the structure. Um, today, uh, stormwater is considered as wastewater, so the decision-making process is not really um, suitable, I would say, for stormwater. So they need this structure to improve the work of, around stormwater. Um, so responsibilities um, was the first one. Like you need to know clearly who is responsible for stormwater. Um, like for example, uh, I would say that stormwater, it's not only about parks, it's not only about trees, it flows on the roofs, it flows on the road, it flows everywhere. So it's a cross-disciplinary problem and you need to bring those expertise into one structure where they can collaborate. Uh, with this vision we have, we challenge the traffic department to reduce the roads. So we need them to sit with the water department and the park and nature department and maybe even more stakeholders we haven't identified yet. So they really need this structure where they're going to meet and work together. And that will for sure also make it easier to find the money to do it. They probably need to use tax money, but which one? And that could be facilitated with a structure. Yeah, so now for the main points from the discussion then. Um, as you can see in our vision, there's a really big conflict with the traffic and we didn't have the space in our master thesis to investigate that thoroughly. So what we can say is that, yes, there's going to be a need for reducing the car traffic in the area if we're going to be able to implement this. Um, but that will also benefit the stormwater because then you get source control. Like there's less pollutants because the cars are the main pollutant. And there's also this issue of like, because the, the Gothenburg traffic strategy also wants to reduce the number of cars. So if we take a really holistic perspective and we see it as one big system, everything, then we might be able to solve this. Uh, and then we have the cost issue. And I would say that this is very much a priority priority issue. Because every new project costs money and every new park project will give additional maintenance costs. And we also heard this from our interviewees and workshop participants. So therefore, if, the, if we can get the priorities right, or the, this as a priority, then that wouldn't be an issue. But of course, Linea Gatan is a pretty expensive street to redo. And right now the priority is housing. So what if maybe we should start with smaller projects and this would come in the future when we have more knowledge about technologies. We should also talk about the workshop group composition because we all only had stormwater professionals in our workshop groups. And of course we got a good picture of what the barriers were from their perspective, but we couldn't really reach a solution that would benefit everybody, that would be very, very feasible. So that would be something for future work to, to bring in all of the different disciplines, maybe even like housing companies or, or more private actors than we have. And as Cedric said, one of these findings were that we should learn more from other cities. And that's very possible because the findings that we have from the barriers are very similar to other case studies. So, so there is a lot of learning opportunities. For example, we can see that when there is a strong political will, things happen. And when there are strong advocacies from the people, things happen. So then to conclude, our aim was to explore how we can do something with stormwater and ecosystem services in a very dense area. And we have now presented a vision for Linnea Stalin, where we transform it and we change the idea of the area. But to, to achieve that, we need to overcome the barriers that we 
identified. And maybe that's better to start from a smaller scale and achieve the legitimacy, the structure and the research needed to be able to do this. And, but what we can also see that is that none of these barriers are impossible to overcome with a little, little bit of political will, a little bit of cooperation. So that's where we should start. So I would like to end with this quote. So we can all ch start to change the world tomorrow and start a movement. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, now it's time for the opposition. So, uh, Taina, welcome up. Thank you guys for the presentation. Um, what I found interesting is that sometimes solution or solutions are as simple as planting trees and <laughs> finding solutions such as planter boxes or rain gardens. So mm -hmm. that was really interesting. And I was I wanted to start with a question that was asked earlier. What was the most surprising aspect that you encountered in your research activities? Um, I would say that for me, you know, we talk about changing systems and so on. And experiencing the complexity of the system mm -hmm. was, yeah, a big input. Yeah, especially this, uh, like, that it's so connected to the traffic. We didn't realize that from the beginning, no. I think. Yeah. And then, why did you choose to look at linear data? Could you elaborate on that? I think for us, it, it's a, such a symbolic street, and it's a very good opportunity, because right now we have uh, this uh, presented this uh, cloudburst plan, for this catchment area of Linnea. So there were already research into this area in the water. And also we could see that it presented all of the challenges that you could possibly have with a stormwater, like with stormwater and ecosystem services. So we thought we'd choose a difficult one so that we can be inspiring <laughs> for mm -hmm. other things. Yeah, did you want to add something? No? No, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, in your thesis, one of the solutions that was brought up in the seminar was to have stormwater cassettes, but you disregarded them because they're made of, out of plastic and that would have a negative environmental impact. Well, yeah. Yes, we, and we had this sustainable framework and plastic doesn't really fit in there according to that definition. So. Yeah. And then what about digging up another street to put in a tram and new traffic route. How does that compare? Yeah, but that's very interesting actually, because then then you get into these like frames, how do you judge sustainability and what do you weigh? Because this is also a question of time perspective. Because of course there's a lot of investment costs, even environmental wise, with digging out another street and transforming the area in that case sense. But you would probably have to have road maintenance anyway, so maybe that's not so bad, but it's bad, of course. But then if you think about the long-term perspective with transforming these areas, there might be a gain anyway. We don't know that because we haven't done a life cycle assessment. <laughs> so, but there's also like, do you, get, do you weigh the greenhouse gases higher than the, the pollutants? Or do you weigh resilience higher, like resilience to climate change effects? It's pretty difficult to answer. Uh, yeah. um, and then your solution included moving the traffic to <laughs> Evro Huzaketan. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what impact that would make on stormwater solutions there? I would say that would, that's out of the scope of this study. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we're probably moving the problems to another streets. <laughs> but but guess, hypothetically, yeah. the city is going to reduce the traffic anyway in the city in the future. So maybe. Yeah, but what we can say also is that we we think that because of Linnea Gotham's placement, we have an especially beneficial, um, like in this area, it's especially beneficial for using this type of solutions. So 
if it's moving to another street, then it's because Lindigatan was better to transform than this other street. Yeah. Now you can continue for <laughs> another five minutes if you want. Oh, so that just, much! Uh, <laughs> that fire away. <laughs> okay. Um, in uh, when you talked about the problems with legitimacy, cool. you mentioned the bottom-up process and that it is necessary to raise awareness of climate change and of stormwater consequences to help solve the problem. Mm -hmm. How would you what? raise awareness? One way to do it and that they're doing in Kiviber is they have signs about what the trees are doing actually close to the car park. So if you could maybe do it in Linegatan where there's a lot more people, maybe more people are going to read it. I, I know I would. But because um, yeah, it's good to do it in Kiviber, but every time I went there it was empty and no one was around reading those signs. So if you could do that in a dense area, maybe it would have a stronger impact. Yeah. But you can also see that it's, it's very relevant because in studies they have found that the most efficient way of raising people's awareness of stormwater is to have a flood. And uh, we can't like engineer a flood, that would be unethical. <laughs> so, so I think that's a very good uh, alternative to actually place the signs where people see them. Yeah. And I thought these questions would be longer. Please, I'm done. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tina, for your questions and for your answers. <clears throat> if anyone has more, have more questions. Yes, <laughs> there are some other questions in the audience. So please. Okay. Mark. Sure. Uh, I mean, I know your proposal for this linear gata, mm -hmm. but this is just to yeah. have a more general approach. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know about how how is the percentage? For separate networks for municipal wastewater and stormwater drainage. No idea. Can okay. we ask the water people? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> no? I've read 35 percent combined. So, okay, 35 combined and 65 separate. Okay, thank you. It's mostly combined. Mm -hmm. But if you go out, then it's separate. Mm -hmm. It depends where it So it depends on the time that the town yeah, was yeah. expanding, yes. Yeah, and I guess that was also a reason why we wanted to be in the central city, because then we can solve the sewage treatment plant problems mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And about the connection from the downspouts, were they, to, to the creek? How is it, uh, how do you make it possible? Is it by urban drainage pipes or? Oh, so the downspout is, um, so today in, on uh, Inigata, the water that goes from the roof, well, it flows through the pipes to the stormwater system. Mm -hmm. So the idea is just to disconnect that and have it flow maybe on the grass or have barrels to keep the water there. Yeah, and then, then I don't know, I would imagine that once you have gone through the barrel and then the grass or treatment garden or whatever the property owner wants to install, then you can lead it through a drainage pipe because mm -hmm. then it, it's not polluted anymore and it's not so high quantities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because I mean, the other option would be just to have it uh, infiltrating by themselves, by itself, yeah, but, but it's, this it's would not... cause deterioration on the street. Yeah, but it depends also how you, how you engineer the soil. Like it doesn't have to deteriorate the streets, mm -hmm. like because you can have more porous, yeah. like you can have other types of things underneath the, underneath the pavement, because it's not the street, right? It's the, the pavement where people walk. Yeah. So then it's not as high load requirements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the last question is, have you, have you yeah. uh, checked the permeable asphalt? Is it applicable for, for such a case? Um, so, so I would say for Gothenburg, we would avoid it because as we said, it's clay soil, so you know that you can't have deep infiltration because mm -hmm. the clay is going to stop it. Mm -hmm. uh, so for some shallow infiltration, I guess you could use it, but... Yeah, but I guess for us, it was also a, re a reason for, like, and the reason for us for not, choo not choosing it was that we wanted to focus on the multifunctionality with ecosystem services. And we wanted to bring the green aspects so that and that's not a green solution in that sense. It's 
maybe it's a sustainable solution mm -hmm. in some places, but we haven't really looked into that so much. Thank you. Right, to be honest. Uh, one comment, one question, actual question. Mm -hmm. uh, the comment is on the, you mentioned the, the, the conflict with traffic increased, yeah. and I actually, I really liked that you kept it out of your scope, because this mm -hmm. is where I really see how the different challenge lab master pieces complement each other. Mm -hmm. So in case you're asked, so what are you doing, you're going to increase pressure on, on traffic, mm -hmm. and we have at least three other master pieces in this lab that, that yeah. give you solutions <laughs> to that, so I really mm -hmm. like that. And um, one question about you you mentioned um, like monetizing the, the stormwater or putting value on it. Um, did you look at examples from countries, very dry countries? Um, because they might, I just thought about, I was in southern Spain where they even around trees next to a street, they put concrete around the stump of the tree, which for me seemed very unlogical, but maybe they wanted to even collect that. So did you look at examples from dry, dry countries to actually see, can we use this stormwater other than as a waste, as a resource for us to, to actually benefit from it? There are very many examples. I can't really count anything. But there's a lot of research on this in Australia, for example, yeah. where they collect stormwater and try to, like, for example, for irrigation, you can use the stormwater. But I don't know if there's so much. Yeah, then it's using stormwater as a resource. Yeah. Um, oh, we don't look too much into it because here it's not a problem. but. Will for sure be interesting for the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to ask about the drop down, the working of maximum. Um, is there any niche or initiative about using uh, this now clean water instead of plugging into the system to use the plug in the building so it's like a smaller unit? I don't know if there's anything here. I'm not sure. I can't be sure that's nothing, but uh, I haven't heard of anything. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm Ben from the area of the Glasgow Lake Kitchen. Yes. I was wondering about the question of uh, the role of ICT and stormwater solutions. Have you explored that? How about adding sensors to the built environment, measuring how the water flows? What does it to um, what does it to the city if you add applications and also using this data to actually visualize the stormwater? I would say that would be a very nice thing to do later on. That's kind of out of our scope again, I think. But it would be very useful to gather this data on site specific site specific data that would be very useful. It's also very interesting to say visualizing the stormwater because that's one of one important aspect that we got from our workshop that it's like people don't see this as a problem and people should maybe see it as a problem because it pollutes their waters and they want to be able people really want to be able to swim in the in the river but like this contributes to making it more polluted so like then maybe people care much care much more and we'll get this movement that we want I don't know. But as also we focus more on roads than on buildings. So for us, this is a bit outside of our scope. Mm -hmm. uh, the route that you were talking about, is, you said that it is actually being used by the ambulance. Yes. So, so I suppose that's the smallest uh, or the shortest route to the hospital. So mm -hmm. if you're planning to reduce mm -hmm. the width or do any alteration with the, the route, it will affect the uh, time or the delay in uh, reaching the hospital. Probably. So, so that's really like a complicated case. So I, would, mm -hmm. I think people, if you uh, propose it to someone also, they would be hesitant to take it in yeah, Probably so. But we don't know, like that would have been have to be investigated also. Mm -hmm. Like we don't know if that's like, we don't really know why it is like that because that's really outside our scope again. So. And maybe we would have to reduce, like maybe it would be possible to keep the ambulance route if we would make the road space a little bit wider or something. That could work maybe if we could keep that in mind. But this is a very complicated topic. <laughs> yeah. I will say thank you for addressing this uh, issue. I, mm -hmm. I, uh, I think of this street that we as one of the most very good example of how, how, uh, how you remove the environment 
I would like to do have that issue for possibly kind of I think in the beginning we wanted to also look into um Fremden. Uh but so first uh, people told us, yeah, we have a plan to have nice green streets with good solutions, so no pipes in the ground at all. And a few weeks later they told us, oh wait, now the housing companies they want to have kind of bigger houses, so they're asking us to have pipes instead. So we yeah, more areas would be interesting and even the new ones. Uh, yeah. And also we heard that a lot of people are looking into the new areas. We wanted to do something different that was a bit on the political side, there is something coming about storm water uh, mm -hmm. beyond the engine. Yeah. It's so going to be like uh, helping the overflowing of storm water in the days, and nowadays it's like quite a place of storm. It's coming. Yeah, I think if Yami actually still had kept some of the good features, it's just. Some some people were I don't I'm not sure where it is now, but there were voices raised that we, it wasn't going to be enough because it wasn't going to have all the space. I don't know, actually. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you take a street like a layout mm -hmm. where you have trees, yeah. is that street working in this way? Or could that be modified in a way that is better work to treat stormwater? Where you already have the space for the trees, so that example that is uh, what is that? a low hanging fruit, maybe. Yeah, it might be so big, but we are also have to understand that if you have trees, it's not. Uh, and, and, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, or it's like the one that goes around Valley or Yes, and you are uh, what was I was talking about? Yeah. yeah. There are some streets with trees, I've seen those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could yeah, they be just, uh, or, they, or they function in this way? They are functioning a little bit in this way because you have the evapotranspiration effects. Like yeah. the trees yeah. take up some of the water and then they kind yeah. of transpire away. But you can't really lead the water to the tree pits because then the trees will drown. Because, it's, because we have clay, so it's not drained away. At this point, so then you have to, would have to modify it a lot. And my point was that you have this already space. the space. Yeah, so then, beginning the, so then you don't have to move so much no. to other streets. You can play with that. As yeah, a, so I think that that was our, our thought from the beginning for the Neogothland as well, but then we thought we discovered it was more complicated. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One comment on this is that the Neogothland is interesting because we need to take the water that falls on Polygraph Tower or whatever, mm -hmm. and that part will be higher, mm -hmm. and it has to go down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it has a role in uh, guiding the water throughout the entire. Mm -hmm. So you need to rearrange this so it's got to be taken away. Because uh, Polygraph Tower is the biggest street that my problem is, the biggest street for Gotham Water. If it's raining in the wrong spot, Polygraph Tower is cut off and no ambulance can reach the hospital. So they want to try to fix that and try to guide the water. really good suggestion. We haven't made any calculation on this because it wasn't difficult for us to find this data and we're not from the water engineering from the beginning so it was difficult <laughs> yeah. for us. Um, so, but I think it's a really good uh, idea and we know that most of the pollutions come from the cars anyway so probably an alternative. Yeah 
Because I think like creating stone water from smaller streets, mm -hmm. although you may not be as fun, but it's a drop in the ocean. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, I, I appreciate it. Well, again, it was more than treating the water. It was about mm -hmm. this multifunctionality of space. Yeah. So dense area, how can we add mm -hmm. those values? Yeah, you have the comments there because if you keep the traffic after um, 20 years, we get lots of contaminated mm -hmm. soil yeah. and also to take care. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about that, what do you do with the soil? No. Get uh, contaminated. We haven't thought about that. No. Yeah, the idea is to choose plants that take those contaminants, mm -hmm. so then you can, it's easier to change the plants than the soil. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you mentioned this urban mining, that maybe it's a way to collect those heavy metals from the plants. So yeah. it's the plants that take the pollutants from the soil. Yeah. John? How much of the problem is the traffic is solved by electric instead of having petrol cars? How much is in the tires? How much is in the you know, contamination from the exhaust pipe? Do you know that? I don't know how much, but it's, there's still a lot of contamination in the tires and even from the brakes mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Like, yeah. it's yeah. Like, yeah. So you don't solve the problem by having electric cars. No. But I, I don't know what the amounts. The mm -hmm. amount right. Could it be a huge difference or will it be a small difference? Going electric. If I get to uh, 50% maybe you reduce. I, I think about the point mm -hmm. that German has a car mode. Mm -hmm. You take away the vehicles, you take away yeah. the <coughs> car exhaust, you take away a lot of the point that German has a car mode. But still, as we say, mm -hmm. in the lumber wheels, in the brake uh, lining. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And also all the plastic materials uh, in the new regions where they put a lot of new plastic. Mm -hmm. Pelé, yeah. the of Pelé, could be there more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's also the aspect of uh, when it comes to braking with electric cars, the, the behavior is not that you step on the brake because you know if you let the engine brake for you, you regenerate the electricity. So mm -hmm. it's also an incentive for the driver not to brake with electric cars. So that can actually remove or at least lower a little bit of yeah. the braking behavior that we have today. Mm -hmm. right. Just one small technical question. You mentioned this green roof. Yes. For the parking, did you also discuss the possibility to put these green roofs on top of the existing buildings? We yes, we thought about it from the beginning. We thought those roofs are too steep. But then during the workshop, someone mentioned, I think in uh, Venice, that they managed to put some green roofs even on all steep roofs. So yeah, but then also maybe you, for another step. But like the thing with this steep green roof is that you you lose a lot of the benefits like stormwater with stormwater flow because the more it slopes, the less water it can contain. So we came to, we, we didn't focus on that. I have a question uh, regarding your one of your conclusions. Yeah. Uh, it was there there is an issue of cost. And since you have you say that this uh, we have a limited scope for our study, of course. Yeah. Um, but maybe if you uh, mentioned that there's an issue of investment mm -hmm. instead of cost. So th th then you don't have to add a lot of stuff, but you can at least uh, mention that, that there's an issue of uh, perception. Is it a cost or is it an investment? I mean, when it comes mm -hmm. to uh, such a solution, there are lots of externalities then mm -hmm. that will be very valuable uh, in such a system. And uh, for instance, I just heard when you mentioned this about the trees, Mm -hmm. uh, with having science on it, yeah. if you make a, an even even more in, informational type of experience, maybe that can go uh, for the educational budget for the city. Yeah. You, you know, like but that when you broaden the the scope, which is really hard when you do a master thesis, 
but <laughs> yeah but this is one of the things that we have discussed as well i think in the thesis it's not called cost it's called financing investments and financing right. maintenance and okay. uh, so this was just the, to make it short in the yeah. presentation okay. um but uh, yeah but it's, it's very true that people have different perceptions of different words so we should have both and uh, like also this with the budgets we know like because the financing issue here is that it, people don't really know like who should pay for this like if it's the traffic department we should should uh, like provide the space and then build something or if it's the water department we should buy like should build the solutions and or if it's the park and nature department like it's different budgets and therefore it's difficult to to manage. That's why there is this need for a structure, a common structure for stormwater. Yeah. It's so fragmented today, we need to bring it together. Yeah. Maybe Linnea, you have a comment there or a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Hashi is not to comment on the different budget. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, something we are discussing today. Uh, mm -hmm. I was more interested in about how, how realistic do you think this is and in what time frame. I mean, even if you put up signs underneath and then find mm -hmm. the water issues, will it be enough for the inhabitants uh, on the streets to uh, think that, oh, sure, that's a problem. Uh, uh, I don't need my parking space anymore. Or uh, huh. think, how would you address that? Do you, do you think it will be enough to do or, or Realistic, I don't know. I would say we try to be ambitious at very high levels to maybe in the future reach something more. I feel like it's probably realistic in the long time frame for this area, but as long because we know that this project in Lawrence Bay, for example, that's very central. Also, it's right by the <laughs> Upton, so then maybe we can start with the small projects and start by giving people the awareness and I'm, I don't know I'm pretty maybe I'm cynical but I'm kind of hoping for small plants so that people will be aware <laughs> when they come to make a plant in the future yeah I don't know it's very difficult to set a time frame I would think it might be not to be a little bit green, but to be very green, much green. Yeah. So it really transformed yeah. the street. Because you go to Manhattan and go to this high line, you know, the, the walk there. The, the houses around that line was, I don't know, mm -hmm. very bad shape when that when it was built. And now, of course, everyone wants to live there. So it, it is really added value to that area. Yeah. People really want to be there and it's connect then the Slutskogen with the river mm -hmm. and it's it you know, it has to if it is really transforming something then it's create something. Yeah. What we often do is we need, we do a little we add fifteen percent of the green in the petrol and you know, people don't say wow but if we go one hundred percent it's much more, you know, attractive sometimes yeah. and we really go in for it. And I guess that's what was our idea also with yeah. going for the river suggestion, yeah. because then that's the most impactful one, yeah. then that would bring more value. So then you, as David said, it might add ex extra yeah. values that but cannot then, be forced. Yeah, and then that's there, then there would be a, a like quantification of value problem for the politicians to be able to right. say that this is what we want and we can justify it budget-wise. So, I don't know, I guess the conclusion here is that it's very complex and we didn't have time to, to investigate enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There are no more questions, uh, or if you have other questions popping up, then we can take a break now for half an hour. And uh, there is also coffee and, uh, and uh, something to eat out in the challenge lab so we'll uh, see each other back here of past two yes. and okay. one more thing sorry uh, for those students who want to